Okay, welcome everyone. Hello again. It's the IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync. It's November the 25th. We're running out of 2019 time. Um, and now it's time to talk about. Wait, we've got a note taker. It's Alex today because Jacob's not here. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so if you're here, put your name on the crypt pad, which I think you've all done already under the attendees list. And we will go through our initiatives in a moment after I've explained the bit at the bottom where you should put your weekly update for async review. And we won't go through that today, but people can look at it uh, and asynchronously when at their leisure. Um, cool. Let's do it then. Uh, initiatives. So what, uh, what I took the liberty of doing this week was removing the uh, updated release process uh, initiative because we've largely kind of done that and been and we're now following uh, the new release process that we PR'd to both go IPFS and JS IPFS and I replaced it with a section called upcoming slash shipped releases uh, and so this is a place where you can put things that are going to be shipped soon or uh, have just shipped and people need to know about it so uh, I put a couple of things down here already um, so news is that uh, JS IPFS HTTP client version 40 has been released under the hood. It is all uh, fetch and async await now, so hooray for that. Uh, we still have uh, pull streams and Node.js streams in there, and we still retain the callback uh, API. So there are breaking changes in that release, but they are small and should be really easy to um, migrate. Uh, the next step for for that for the HTTP client is to then is to now um, uh, make some changes to um, remove some of the streaming APIs that we have uh, in favor of just plain old async iterables, uh, which will be super cool, um, and remove callback interfaces and remove uh, well, this is the thing, right? I've opened a PR and it. Uh, it actually reduces the size of the IPFS HTTP client bundle by over half. So it was like 240K and now it's less than 100, it's like 96, I think. So um, that is really cool. But honestly, it's mostly because I removed peer ID and peer info from the bundle. Uh, and what is happening is that lib p2p crypto is being pulled in because of including those uh, those dependencies and lib p2p crypto is huge um, and uh, i believe not very much used uh, when you get a peer id from a http http um http client sorry people are messaging me it always happens right uh so uh i've got a proposal for removing those um, and instead replacing them with just an object which describes the peer info and a CID instead of a peer ID because a peer ID is a CID and it will continue to be for the foreseeable future. Um, so that, that, if that gets merged, then that will be good news, good times for everyone. So uh, that's cool. Uh, second up is JSIPFS 040 is still in RC. Um, I kind of... Uh, paused on that a little bit while I was fixing up the JS IPFS HTTP client because um, uh, that was just a lot of work and I wanted to get it all out of the way. Um, so that is a little bit delayed, but we are currently in stage two, um, which is community dev testing. And in a few days, we will transition to stage three uh, unless people um, have big issues. I've actually already found out a number of issues which I have sent PRs to fix um, already. So uh, that's good. So that should hopefully ship by the end of the month uh, or the beginning of December. Yeah. Uh, so you can look at that. Um, and that's all that I have to say about upcoming and shipped things or releases and core implementations. Does anyone else have anything to share that's been shipped or is coming up soon? Or have any questions? All right. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Okay, Very so briefly. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, um, we've announced it, but want to announce it just one more time. Uh, we're we have new bootstrappers, um, and we are starting the process of retiring the old bootstrappers. Um, so I threw kind of the initial PR to JS IPFS. Um, there's some notes, and I can can tweak that and make it a little more useful. Feel free to 
uh, adopt that if you would like. Um, but we'll be doing the same for Go IPFS uh, and then making the world better. Yeah, that's very cool. Thank you, Michael. Um, uh, yeah, awesome. Um, yeah, and then and then after that PR landed, uh, I realized that JS IPFS doesn't support DNS adder, multi-adders, uh, and I didn't really know what they were. So that- Oh, that's right. Right, a spec. And so we, now we've got some documentation for DNS adders and then Ollie like made it much better. Uh, so yeah, don't retire them just yet because we can't resolve those DNS adder multi <laughs> I'm glad I brought that up. Good. And another, Noted. I will not. Another extension to that saga. Uh, Stephen raised the point that while GoAG PFS does support recursively resolving DNS adders, so if a DNS adder points to a TXT record that is also a DNS adder, GoAG PFS will correctly recursively resolve that. Lib P2P won't. So that's also unfortunate. That's weird. But yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. Pull requests are here needed. <laughs> okay, uh, cool. So moving swiftly on then, uh, if there's nothing else, uh, upgrading the testing and infra process. I don't think any of the people would be uh, yeah. the, unless Dirk can share anything or Alex can share something. Uh, no, just quickly on the upcoming shit releases. So um, the IPFS UNIXFS importer gained support for adding uh, metadata to um, IPFS nodes, uh, also known as Unix of SV 1.5, coming to an IPFS near you soon. Nice. That means that uh, people who are storing large amounts of data and need to retain the modified times because maybe they're syncing some things and want to know when things have been updated uh, can, can actually know that information because IPFS currently doesn't have that, that sort of thing baked in. Uh, and file nodes. As well, um, so that's fun times. We had a spec. Well, we created a spec for Unix FS 1.5. This is a stopgap between Unix before Unix FS v2 lands, which I'm sure is coming soon. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's that is awesome news. Um, so I guess that will probably make its way into JS IPFS 41. It's kind of backward compatible, right? So if you don't if you don't specify anything, you just it doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, if you if you create a node with metadata, obviously you won't be able to read it with older versions, uh, and Go won't be able to read it either until it ships support for metadata. Uh, but if you omit it, and because it's just added onto the end of the protobuf, um, you will still be able to read it. Will older versions of Go IPFS be, still be able to read the node if it's had got met metadata or no? No, I think it, uh, it encounters a thing that doesn't know what to do. Okay, only new nodes. Okay, um, but the, I guess the good the good part about that is that we had the spec builds in this option for um, there being nodes. Uh, that are linked to from the metadata node. So even if you couldn't read the metadata node, you could probably still read the DAG PB and look at the links and get the whole of the file anyway, or most of the file, depending on how it's constructed. Anyway, uh, enough, enough of that. <laughs> um, that's to do with like, you can put some of the file data in the metadata node if you want, or none of it, anyway. Let's move on because I'm not helping things. Uh, I, uh, we will try and drop a link to the UnixFS 1.5 spec in the notes for the show. Uh, cool, okay, so upgrading, let's move on because we are like 15 minutes in and we're only, only done a little bit. Uh, upgrading, testing and infra and process. Is anyone around to talk to that? I don't think uh, there's been much kind of client facing change, but there's, they did a bunch of work on it last week. Nice, moving forward. Uh, cool, Lidl is not around for subdomain gateway stuff. Um, 
but uh, in 040, I literally just spent ages trying to write the release notes for 040. I recommend you go and read them because we've now got, um, you can use base32 encoded peer IDs in IPNS paths. Uh, and so I've written an explanation of like what that actually means and why it's important in the release notes. So go and, go and check out the release notes for 040. Um, Distributed signaling is probably still on hold because uh, async await is still happening in libp2p land. Um, IPNS stuff, so Adrian and Hugo are also not here, so we can't talk about that. Um, adding performance, we might be able to talk about that if Alex wants to share some news. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I did some hacking. Uh, uh, I was at Team Week and a little bit on the airport on the way in, on the airplane on the way back and. Uh, Adding files to IPFS is going to become dramatically faster. Um, so what I did was a few things. So the first thing I did was um, when you're importing a file, at the moment it just like imports one file, does the chunking, creates the DAG, does the do, then moves on to the next file. So now it it'll do like ten at once. Uh, well, it'll do an arbitrary number at once, and then for each file it'll do all the uh, it'll do a whole bunch of uh, nodes at once when it creates the the DAG, um, so it takes the buffers and it hashes them and turns them into unique CFS nodes, creates CID, like all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we're doing all that sequentially, so now it, it, that's all done in parallel. Um, and then uh, I, well, sorry, I made it so that the uh, pinning, the flushing of pinning becomes debounced. So at the moment, every time you add a, a file, it pins that file, it, it creates you know, a pin, an entry in the pin set, and then writes all that out to disk, which is hella slow. Um, in the browser, I found the pinning, the flushing of pinning was taking about 50% of the time, uh, because typically you're, you know, when you have an empty repo, you're writing a file, and if it's one block, then you're writing a pin as well, which then is a block. Uh, so yeah, so about 50% of the time is spent just flushing which is super tedious. Um, so I debounced it, like standard kind of thing that you do as a UI developer. Uh, so now every time you say, please flush, it'll wait a little bit. And then if something else says, please flush, it'll flush the second time round. Because the thing is that when the second thing says, please flush, it's because it's changed the pins. So the, the initial call to, to flush pins is now out of date because the pin set has been updated. So you don't even, like you're, you're just redundantly writing data again and again and again. So now it'll just like, if you've got a whole list of files that you're doing, it will just wait, 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 and then it will just flush at the end, uh, which is much faster. Um, so that is has basically doubled the uh, performance of adding. Um, so the the add performance at the moment without these improvements is comparable to Go IPFS. Uh, it's half the speed, um, which is quite nice. The other thing that I've done is I've added this idea of non-atomic uh, file rights to the data store. So, you know, in, uh, in databases, you have ACID, which is the properties of a database, and the A stands for atomicity, which means that once you do an operation, the results of that operation are available to other operations. Um, this means that, like, in practice, this means that for like, the fast stored data store, we uh, wait for all bytes of a file to be flushed to disk before we consider the operation complete. Uh, we do that with a module called Fast Write Atomic, uh, which is not fast, uh, but it does write atomically, um, which is cool, except for it's really slow. Um, so Node has its own uh, write FS, like write file functions, which are non-atomic. So they do not guarantee that the bytes have been flushed to disk after they've finished, um, so we can't use it. But like, what if your application didn't care? Like if you're, for example, if you're like using just a CLI and you don't have a daemon running, then it's not going to be a problem that the bytes haven't all made it to disk as soon as the add command finishes because the whole CLI is going to get torn down after that anyway. Um, and they will be flushed to disk before the process exits. Um, so you could just use a non-atomic file write in that case. And that has delivered an enormous speed up. So passing that in as an option has basically increased the speed of adding by an order of magnitude. Uh, which is super cool. Um, so I'm just trying to rationalize those into a bunch of PRs to all the different libraries that we can use to get that in. And that will be, that will be super good. Any question? That's really cool news. Um, uh, so I guess the caveat is that if you are writing non-atomically, 
to the repo and if you if someone tries to get something from from ipfs or get that cid or get a cid like if it's quick enough so if it gets the result back it's quick enough to try and get the cid it could ask the repo and say have you got this and the repo can say no and so it will go to the network and ask start searching the dht yeah, and even worse, it could ask the repo, have you got this? And the repo is like, sure I do, and it doesn't have the whole file. <laughs> so, you know, caveats, caveats apply. Like it's very, very, like very specific use cases that it'll be useful for. Right, cool. That sounds really interesting though. It would be good to uh, get it suggested to go IPFS as well so that they can do something similar potentially uh, cool okay uh, so that's that uh, Aiden is not here today um, for any other added performance stuff um, the migration to multi hash keys in the block store is currently I just haven't had a time to look at that yet so it's it's um, it's on hold for now um, just because other things have become more important <laughs> uh, but I'll get there soon. Um, Dirk, do you have any bit swap updates for us? Uh, no, just what's there. I'm, I'm currently blocked, <clears throat> waiting for uh, test groundwork and for reviews on the code. Um, so hopefully, hopefully this week we can get unblocked. Um, in the meantime, I might see if there's some async await work or something I can do that's quite quite small and I can do in a couple of days. I don't know, Alan, if you have any insight into that or if that's mostly happening in Libp2B at the moment. Yeah, um, I think Libp2B is the one that's lacking at the moment. So you might want to check in. I know Jacob's not, not in today, but he will be around tomorrow, I think. Um, so you could check in with him. Um, yeah, in terms of like JS IPFS, it's, it's literally just the remaining. We're, we're all the way up to IPFS level now. So um, we're, we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, but yeah, that would be super useful or, um, or uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, alrighty. Um, next up we have, uh, oh, async await refactor. Um, <clears throat> good. We're already talking about it. <laughs> like that, that, like I said, it's nearly completing, uh, the P2P are currently bubbling their stuff up. I did a little bit of work, um, not last week, but a week before on, um, a module called link for it length pre prefix, which is just a fork of uh, pull length prefix. So it's just an async iterables version of <clears throat> of uh, a uh, an async iterable where you can read, uh, uh, you can encode and decode messages that are prefixed with a number to say how long they are. Um, and that prefix is usually a variant, so you can it can be of arbitrary size. Um, but uh, one thing that uh, the lippy 2 p guys realized they needed for um, SecIO was uh, actually, I think it uses, it actually doesn't use varint for its length prefix messages. It uses like a fixed length, um, like an, uh, I think it's a int 32, like an unsigned int 32 or something. Um, so they needed a, like a, uh, a, a fixed length uh, reader. So, uh, uh, or encoder and decoder. So I did some work to that module to um, uh, add custom length encoding and decoding. So like you, like varin is the default, but if you wanted to use like a fixed length um, uh, um, prefix, then you can. You just give it like a function that re that encodes uh, a number into a prefix and uh, and a function to decode as well. Uh, and that's so yeah, you can have you can do that. Yeah. So something that came up in reviewing uh, some changes to the DHT, the JS DHT, is it seems like it just drops messages if they're too long. And I'm wondering if it would make sense to um, add an option to the work you've been doing, uh, the length prefix work, or if that should be another like transform. Yeah, I think the default is like four meg or something. It's really big. 
Um, but yeah, ideally it wouldn't just drop messages and they'd be split uh, appropriately between multiple uh, between multiple uh, messages. Oh, are you saying that that shouldn't even happen in the first place? Like at the at the DHT level, it shouldn't need to be concerned about it. About the message length, like it, I, um, hmm. ideally no. Like it would be nice to just be able to send the messages. At the moment, I know that if you exceed the, if you give it a chunk, a buffer that's more than four meg, then it will throw. It will not let you send that. But then, but then now I'm thinking, like, why would you have a chunk in memory that is more than four meg? Of data, I'll point you to the to the issue, and maybe you can uh, give some insight. Yeah, that'd be cool. It might be kind of like legacy code, you know, where it used to have to check that, and now it's no longer necessary. Possibly, like it, it might not be. I know, for, I know that's the limit for it length prefix, um, but there might be some arbitrary limit in um, in mplex or something um, somewhere else. But yeah, do we want to like? Because the question is like, do we inform the client? Because they've sent a message that the sort of the client, you know, the remote node that they've sent a message that's too big. I mean, do we not just want to like drop the drop the connection or something? Because I mean, if they're sending you bad things, then they're probably a bad actor, and you probably don't want to be connected to them anymore. I thought Dirk was talking about actually sending a mess, like you have a message and just sending it to a remote. You're sending it to someone else. Oh, we're oh, no, bad it's on the receiving end. Yeah, on the receiving end. It's on the receiving end, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I, th I think that's probably why there is a, a limit in place in the first place, so you can't just be sent like arbitrary message lengths uh, that, that are too big. Um, but either way, like there's someone, there's some like e they could send that big mess if they can send that big message, then they then it it would be nice to to have that chunked appropriately. If you see what I mean. Anyway, this is a this is a conversation for some time else. Um, um, anyway, so yeah, async weight refactor. That, we we've bubbled stuff all the way up. Um, the JS IPFS the HTTP client has now been almost all converted, apart from like it still has call streams and merge streams and callbacks. Um, so we're we're really close, um, which is super good news on that front. Um, I cannot update on libp to b and there's no one else here for doing that, but they ha do have a Trello board somewhere, which is on link to from other, from previous, um, previous meetings, um, which you could probably check out. Um, all right, so that brings us to the end of our initiatives. Uh, we have one minute left, but luckily design review proposals, uh, we don't have anything there unless anyone wants to add something last minute. Uh, blockers and asks, anyone? Uh, oh, actually I had, ah, here we go, yeah, I put it in parking lot. Uh, so asks, I have an ask. Um, I have, we, we received a pull request from a new contributor to update the, or switch licenses to MIT uh, plus or and or uh, Apache at your at your own leisure because um, we had previously expressed a desire to do that. Um, so that's that's super good news. Uh, I've ta tried to tag people in an issue, but GitHub will only mention the first 50 people. So um, so if uh, I, I need to send put a link here, but basically, um, the, the next step is to have contributor sign off. So everyone needs to agree that, um, that everything they've contributed in the past and in the future will now be um, licensed as MIT and Apache. Uh, so that would be, that'd be cool if you have not received a notification for that particular uh, problem, then not problem, uh, th on that particular issue, then um, please go to the issue now and um, I've, I've uh, check the checkbox or um, add a, uh, a comment to uh, say that you sign off on it. Uh, let me just put the link here. There you go. Oh, I put it in the notes as well. Oh, there's a, someone's done it already. Thank you. Um, cool. Uh, any other blockers or asks from anyone else? 
All right, questions. Uh, oh, so yeah, this is a question on the DHT, cool. Um, so yeah, I'll, t I'll try and take a look at that at some point. Um, and in which case parking lot is empty as well, unless we have any final things from anybody else. Okay, no, all right. Thanks for coming everyone. It's been a pleasure as always. And uh, I will see you again next week for another exciting edition of IPFS Core Implementations Weekly Sync. Happy IPFSing. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.